So let's talk about the budget deficit at this point. And, and this slide really doesn't do it justice. If, if you put into consideration the unfunded pension liabilities by states, if you put into consideration the Social Security uh, problems and under, underfunded Social Security and Medicare, that line is probably double to triple. But um, in any case, it gets the point across. So we have a very, and I think we all know this, we have a very terrible situation in Washington. And I don't care which side that we're on. The, the, the bottom line is we have this gridlock. And the gridlock normally can be a very good thing when the economy is healthy. Nobody's trying to push through different agendas. Things are firing on all cylinders. And let's just not bother it. But as we you know, learned today, we, there are some issues. And we do need to have some kind of progressive energy policies and unemployment and you know, lots of other measures. Um, yet we don't. I think it's really sad that a few weeks ago we couldn't even cut 1% out of, out of our budget. 1%. I mean, I think it's a great thing that S&P finally, they put a negative watch on our debt. It was a shot across the bow and maybe it'll get people to work together. But if we've learned anything, I'm not going to hold up my breath. We, you know, the way that we act here in the U.S. is we typically wait for some kind of crisis to happen. And at that point, we start to worry about it. Um, uh, it was interesting. I was talking to a hedge fund manager that was talking to Obama a few weeks ago, uh, probably about a month and a half ago. And I, the, our, our debt, on average, is maturing over the next few years. And he, you know, they said, look, rates are so low. Why wouldn't you want to lock that in for a longer period of time? right? Why wouldn't you want to extend the, your maturity on your debt so we can take care of this low interest rate? And he said, well, you know, well this will work. You know, this will work itself out. And um, anyway, I, I'm not really sure how it's going to work itself out, but uh, I, I think that there might be some, some issues as we, uh, you know, as we look forward. I think one of the ways that we have to do this is inflate our way out. Um, I think that we will get a lot more inflation, not this year. I think it'll start coming to the system next year. Uh, but later on down the road, we will see uh, a good amount more inflation. And if the Fed typically makes a mistake, what they typically do is keep things too loose for too long, especially when we come out of uh, you know, the kind of recession that we've been in. And that makes sense. And I'd be doing the same thing. To risk not going back in, they keep the gas pedal on. And uh, so how does that impact you know, our status, um, you know, dollar as a, as a reserve currency and all those other things that people worry about. Well, you know, this is interesting. Um, Mexico just bought 100 tons of gold in the first quarter of this year after 30 years of uh, selling the asset. Uh, this is uh, global official gold holdings of central banks worldwide. And you can see after, uh, you know, since 1960, uh, over, on average, this has been being reduced, but just re most recently it's spiking up. And this is just gold to give the example, but it's starting, the, the, it, and, and this, this, this happened right uh, when we announced QE1, when we started to monetize our debt. So if we don't think this is some kind of problem, you know, we're kidding ourselves. It's not a major problem now. Rates are, you know, pretty low. We can borrow at pretty you know, cheap costs. But like I said, we're kicking this can down the road. We tend to wait until there's a crisis. And at some point, if we don't increase interest rates, the market is going to increase interest rate for us. And, and to borrow that kind of money, it's going to be a lot bigger problem than it currently is today. And uh, so again, I, I think that if we don't get things straightened out, and if we don't make some changes over the next couple of years, we're, we're going to have a, a bigger issue. I think we're fine now. I think we're fine over the next six months, over the next year. It's going to be an election issue. But at some point, the music ends. And um, uh, again, it could be over the next year. It could be years from now. And one of the things that we're going to have to do is we are going to have to st cut some of the spending. We are going to have to tax more. And when that time comes, you know, GDP uh, won't be as rosy as maybe it is now. So the way that the Fed uh, is, the way that the futures market is trading on uh, what the Fed is going to be doing, um, the, the, this, this shows the, uh, the futures contract on the Fed funds rate uh, by April 2012. So it's forecasting 
what rates will be at that point. As you can see, it's moved between 30 basis points and 80 basis points. What this means is that they're anticipating that there's probably going to be two rate increases between now and the, first, uh, the end of the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter. Uh, for the reasons I stated, the Fed keeping the foot on the gas pedal, I think it's going to take a little bit longer than that. Um, I think the way that this is going to unfold is we're going to stop buying treasuries, uh, as indicated, the end of QE2. I think we're going to stop reinvesting our mortgage, uh, mortgage-backed securities when they're coming due right now. We're reinvesting and buying more. That's going to end uh, probably in sometime in the first quarter. And I think rates are going to be a little bit more delayed than maybe futures markets suggest. Uh, Bernanke spoke this afternoon and did say that we're going to continue to keep loose for a, a very long period of time, whatever that means. But um, this is a, a major issue facing our country, and uh, I'm not sure what the end game is. But uh, in summary, in the, you know, in the short term, we think things are, are looking great. I think this year, uh, GDP will, will come in nicely. There's not going to be any shocks barring oil. Uh, stock markets should continue to rally, getting people to continue to spend. But I think as we get into 2012 and the consumer is under more stress, the housing market is under more stress, and we're dealing with some of these fiscal issues with higher rates, we're going to have some, some, some more problems at that point, and uh, we'll see what happens. So thank you very much.